how does someone become a talent buyer for Live Nation or AEG Presents? And then once you're there working at the highest level as a talent buyer promoter, how do you work your way up? There's no better way to learn how to work your way up as a talent buyer than hearing it from the president of House of Blues, Live Nation, Clubs and Theaters, Michael Yerke. This is from podcast episode number 26, and he shares some really good advice on what Live Nation looks for in talent buyers. And once you're there, how do you work your way up? And there's some really cool things that he says in this clip. So my mantra or motto for the show is go see shows, meet people, make stuff, right? So there's a really important lesson that Michael Yerke talks about going to shows. And if you are not in LA or New York or Nashville where the industry is, what can you do, right? There's always something you can do. There's always some people that you can meet when touring shows come through your city, where you're at. So check out this clip from podcast episode number 26 with Michael Yerke. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel and the podcast. We'll be back very soon. Live the life you love. He asked how uh-huh. you can work your way up in, in a company like Live Nation. So it kind of goes along with a question I was going to ask about your story because you started out as a town buyer at House of Blues in Chicago, but you have a really great position now at, at Live Nation working as, as the president of House of Blues and Live Nation talent in the touring office. Tell me, like, what are some qualities that helped you get to that position and qualities that could help someone else climb up the ladder in a company like Live Nation? <laughs> Yeah. I mean, look, I, I would tell, and I say this to people that, 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 you know, younger folks that are working with us and people that we are interviewing from time to time for positions. I think that our company of four, for someone who is hardworking and smart and who puts in the time and effort and has a, a willingness and ability to relocate, mm-hmm. I think our company offers a tremendous amount of opportunity. Um, and I say that because, you know, we are expanding, you know, not only in the U.S., but internationally every day. I mean, mm-hmm. I mean, it sounds like an exaggeration, but, you know, you look, you know, we just bought Bottle Rock, we, you know, festivals, you know, we, we bought promoters. We just bought a promoter, another promoter in, uh, in the U.K. last week, uh, another promoter management company in the U.K. this week. Um, we are opening three brand new venues in the theater and club division this year. We're opening a brand new venue in Grand Rapids called 20 Monroe Live next week, February 1st. Mm-hmm. On February 28th, we're opening a brand new House of Blues in Anaheim, 2000 cap, beautiful room. Uh, and then in early September, we're opening in a joint venture with Stateside Production, the Van Buren in Phoenix. I mean, mm-hmm. there, you know, we last year we acquired the Ace of Spades in Sacramento. So really my point is that we are we are a very much in a growth mode and have been for years. Mm-hmm. Um, people get promoted. People, you know, as we acquire new new properties, buildings, people can move up. Uh, people, when people move up, there, that creates an opportunity where they were, right? Mm-hmm. And so, I really think it just comes down to hard work, um, putting in the time and effort, and that isn't just in the office. To be honest with you, right. it's it's going to shows it's networking and it's easier to network out in Los Angeles or New York where the industry is largely based. But that, 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 you know, I was in Chicago and, and I would like to think that all the, the time and effort and hard work that I put in was the reason why I was offered the opportunity to come to LA and oversee, you know, our booking for clubs and theaters and our touring department. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so I, I don't know that for a fact because I didn't hire me, but but right. I believe that that those are the reasons for it. Um, and and I see examples of people all the time. I, you know, unfortunately, a guy Tommy Ganoza is going to be leaving us uh, overseeing. He's overseeing the RVP for the West Coast for our theater and club division, but he's doing that because he's moving back to Chicago to book uh, amphitheaters and stadiums for the company. Wow. You know, so and to, Tommy had previously been in Chicago and Minneapolis and moved to LA for the regional vice president role. So, you know, I could sit there and go on for half an hour about people that have, um, that are really good at what they do and were looking for an opportunity. And when there was that, they were offered it and they took it and they excelled at it and they moved on to the next thing uh, as they continue to move up. So 
to me it is it's hard work it's the extra effort it's networking it's being smart and the other part of it is there's a little bit of managing managing your managing up meaning how do you work with your directly the person that you report to Mm -hmm. you know how do they how do they see how do you think they see your work ethic and your approach um do they see you putting in the extra hours i was talking to a guy tim sweetwood who works for c3 now tim Mm -hmm. had his own business tim is based in atlanta and books the shaky knees shaky beats festival along with um a few others for c3 and he said something to me when we were talking about some younger folks and he said, you know, whenever he has a new assistant, he says, look, you need to be, you should be here before I get in mm-hmm. and you should be here after I leave. Oh, yeah. Right. And it's, it's, you know, it's that time and effort and, and it's then being at shows, mm-hmm. you know, if you live in Orlando or in Chicago, sure. Agents or managers are not at, at every show that are coming through your town, but the tour managers there right. and that tour manager is going to either say good things or bad things or not say anything because you didn't show up, but Mm -hmm. you know, because he didn't get to know you, but he's going to talk to the agent and the manager the next day and tell him how that show went last night. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you're there as the promoter and you're making sure things are going well and your team is treating them great and the show is sold well and you develop a bond with them, they're going to be through that tour manager is going to be through with a different band probably in six months. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, after that tour ends, he's, that, he's going to move on to the next thing because that's his career or her career. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I think it those kind of networking and the word gets back that, you know, so-and-so was great, you know, and they start hearing that and the agent starts hearing that. And that can lead to, you know, jump ball situations on a show going your way versus your competitor, mm-hmm. you know, and as you get more and more shows, your building gets notoriety. You get more notoriety. You get noticed. You know, I, myself, and Ben Whedon, who's our COO of theater and clubs, probably two or three times a week, I'm asking agents and managers that I trust, who are some good young people out there that don't work for us, mm-hmm. that we should be knowledge, that should be on our radar so when the next opportunity comes up, we're thinking about them. Mm-hmm. I probably, you know, once or twice every two weeks, I'm having more of an informational interview with somebody maybe where there's not even a position per se for them Mm -hmm. because I want to get to know them a little bit. So when that situation comes up, they're on my short list. And that comes from recommendations from people in the industry. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's how you build up your, your brand, if you will, or your people starting to know who you are and that you're doing a good job. Mm -hmm. 